Hey guys, how you doing? Today I'm underneath Section 8, and I thought I'd make a video uh, about this subject because not a lot of people cover it. So let's talk about belt wrap, let's talk about belt slip. So when you see a lot of these drive systems on superchargers, you're going to start noticing that a lot of them make up for the lack of belt grip by not necessarily putting a grippier pulley on it like a grip tech or something like that but they widen the ribs meaning widen the footprint go from a six rib to an eight rib to a 10 rib on zr1 they're 11 rib and not necessarily go for the let's say textured pulley to basically have the belt grip as much as possible on the supercharger so on this supercharger this is the magnuson 2650 so on this supercharger, I'll show you what's going on uh, when it comes to the area of the tensioner. So when you look at the tensioner, right, what I'm gonna try to do is get a, a good picture of what's going on in terms of belt wrap. I got a frayed belt, I know, but look, this is, I'm remedying the issue. So what's happening right now is this is, this is not the recommended belt routing that Magnuson had for it. This on 11 or 12 PSI is 100% fine. But when you look at the belt wrap, right, look at the belt around the tensioner as, let's just say, circumference or degrees. Like, how many degrees around the um, tensioner pulley is the belt actually touching? Let me try to get closer. Okay, let me see if I can make this happen. Okay, this is perfect. So, when you can, as you can see, it probably has not even a... Not even half of the pulley is actually being used to, you know, basically melt, make the belt wrap around that tensioner pulley. So when I looked at the Magnuson instructions, this was not the recommended routing of the belt because there is an AC pulley missing, okay? They basically overlay the belt routing on their instructions given the fact that you have a air compressor, air conditioning compressor. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna see if I can get more belt wrap around the tensioner by, believe it or not, adding a pulley. So the thought process is if you were to add a pulley, like a delete kit, you know, like an idler kit, it'll make the belt come this way more so that it can wrap around the AC pulley or the delete pulley that you have and it'll cause that belt to actually come back more you see it'll come back more to allow that wrap around the AC pulley automatically giving the tensioner pulley more belt wrap so that it could keep proper tension on the belt so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install this guy I'm just gonna preemptively look at how the wrap looks by just disabling the pulley from the supercharger. And if it all looks good, then it's up to me to figure out what the hell size this belt is gonna be because now I've added theoretically six or seven more inches to the belt length by installing an idler pulley. So let me get the idler pulley installed. So it looks like it goes like this. Yep, has little locating dowels on it and as you can tell those have locating dowels or receiving dowels and bada bing bada boom let's bolt it up <laughs> all right so she's in so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna undo the belt from the supercharger and then just wrap the bottom here to see what it all looks like because it basically has to come through here through this void if I'm not mistaken so I'll figure out how this routing is and then once I figure that out then I have to get an old belt cut it route it measure it and then do like two or three different takes to see which belt is going to be proper for this application so I looked at the instructions and I'll put up a, uh, a screenshot of what I saw basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be eliminating not eliminating I'll basically be shoving that belt underneath basically tuck it and then it'll wrap around the idler and then go up to this other idler, giving it uh, a lot more belt wrap. Basically the way you see it right now, but it's actually gonna go through that little area so that it wraps under 
the AC idler or the fake idler and then it'll come up and grab this side of the idler and then route the other way so I'm gonna unbolt this guy actually yeah I'm gonna unbolt this guy you know what no I'm not I'm basically gonna get rid of the belt I have to remove the belt and then after removing the belt I'll have to route the new way measure and figure out but I wanted to do like a visual so you guys could see what I'm talking about so I'll probably go ahead and do that so you can see what, what I mean so what I did basically is I got a belt and I routed it and then I cut I put a piece of tape and then cut it right in the middle where it had like no tension the total length of this is 75 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try a 74 inch belt and a 73 and a half inch six rib belt and see how close I am it's one of those things where you have to kind of go back and forth a whole bunch of times because you don't know how much tension you have on the tensioner Maybe it's not the most scientific way of doing it, but that's how I do it. Okay, so I ordered and installed a six rib, 73 inch belt from Amazon, Goodyear brand. And I have a much better, um, let's just say tension situation, but after putting it in, believe it or not, I probably can get away with an even shorter belt like 72 and a half but this is pretty good so what i'm gonna do is uh probably get a 72 and a half on order keep this guy as a spare reassemble everything and we'll see if this is a more i don't want to say beneficial situation because now it's routed pretty much like a gd500 would be routed once you get the engine turned over everything will straighten out nicely so let me reassemble everything the front drive the front belt cold air throttle body the whole nine yards and we'll just make sure everything's lined up. And as always in Florida, hurricane season, it's raining, so I won't be able to test it today. All right, so I had a bit of a roadblock, and um, when I installed the AC delete bracket, I noticed that the belt was riding on the outside lip. It wasn't actually centered on the pulley. So I mentioned it to Jake, and he goes, actually, I have a bracket for that, which is kind of amazing that he has a bracket for everything. PBH part number, PBH 200 and it actually brings the bracket forward based on these little locating holes just enough and what I'm hoping is once I bolt these these adapters on that it'll bring the bracket forward enough so that belt is nice and centered. Okay bracket installed um, he provides three smaller bolts the other bolts basically the stock bolts are not used so these are not used he provides proper hardware this is also in the bracket is intended for your air conditioning bracket to line up with this kind of belt system but because this belt was like on the, on this edge in its original location we ended up bringing it out more and it looks to be good so i'm going to start the car see how the belt rides along the drive and if everything looks good take it for a test drive do uh, i don't know if i'm going to do a wide open throttle pull it's like a thousand degrees out but maybe one hit in second just to see what it does let's start her up listen to the worst sounding starter slash flywheel on the planet and we'll see how the belt is riding along I don't need the intercooler pump on come on we don't need that <laughs> Let's take a look at a data log after I installed the idler. Obviously, it's very obvious what happened here. It's the RPMs were on their way up. It would have been hauling the mail, but MAV frequency, it belt slipped. So this is telltale sign of belt slip because MAV frequency technically should still be going up with RPM and it just did not. Fuel trims are good, fueling is good, spark is good. Uh, it generated 2.4 air load, so it's probably stuck at about I don't know, 17 PSI or so, maybe, give or take. So it's just kind of stuck there because the math frequency just did nothing. So unfortunately, the idler 
and the new belt routing with a six rib belt is still not enough to give me enough grip on the supercharger pulley to be able to, you know, make some good boost. So what is next? Well, what's next is probably going to be a tighter belt because it's only 25 bucks. So you, you do the cheapest thing. So I'm going to get a half inch shorter belt and I'm going to opt for a different material. There is like a Kevlar style belt that you can get out there. Uh, this is just regular good old Goodyear rubber belts. So I'm going to try a different material belt that's 72 and a half inches uh, because this is currently 73. So I'll shorten side per side a quarter inch and see if that mitigates some of the belt slip because it seems like at high RPMs over 60, 800, it just starts to slip. And I'm trying to do everything possible before I have to upgrade to eight or 10 rib. The single, the dual inlet Magnuson blower does not leave a lot of room to be able to install an eight or a 10 rib. So I'm trying to do everything possible to make it grip with the six rib and if I can't then I'll go ahead and have to change the snout machine something whatever I have to do to make a 10 rib fit or even an eight rib fit just to be able to get a little more grip on it now that we know the belt length that we need for the current layout of the fiat and belt routing system all right guys that was it that was the uh the video so the next thing to do on this thing is a slightly shorter belt with different material try that if it uh experiences belt slip again then we're gonna have to potentially go eight rib or 10 rib and potentially change the snout from a dual inlet to a single inlet because that's that's the only way I can, I think, physically get a wider footprint on a supercharger pulley on this setup. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I'll talk to you later.